Hi guys, welcome to the Bluestone Villa, my Victorian home, and to today's video, which I'm very excited to share with you because I am making a traditional Edwardian afternoon tea. In fact, it's actually a Downton Abbey themed afternoon tea. And in fact, in fact, <laughs> I've actually already had it. So I've actually sat here and it's kind of <laughs> been demolished around me. James and I have just finished up. We're feeling very, very full. It was very delicious. And yeah, I made everything myself. It was all very kind of like traditional Edwardian slash Victorian style. It was all made from the official Downton Abbey cookbook, which I got for Christmas and I am yet to have used. So I thought this would be a really great opportunity to have a little bit of a delve into the book and do my first foray into making something from this. It's got a massive section on afternoon tea and garden parties. In fact, when I was first thinking about doing this, I had hoped to set our afternoon tea outside, looking back at the Bluestone Villa, all set up. You know how they do, looking back at looking back at Downton Abbey, and yeah, I thought it would be very picturesque, but the weather has not complied. It was very sunny on Saturday, and it has not been as nice yesterday and today. So I have set it up inside, which is fine as well, because as we know, in Downton Abbey, they tend to take afternoon tea every day, I think maybe, in the library. So we've kind of gone for that vibe today in here. So I'm gonna be sharing with you everything that I made from the cookbook, how I did it, and then how I've set up the table as well. I really wanted to do a bit of a Downton Abbey themed um, afternoon tea because actually the latest film was released on Friday. It's Bank Holiday Monday here in the UK today. And we went to go and see the film on Friday, absolutely loved it. We have loved the other film and all of the series. So yeah, I just thought this would be a really lovely ending to the bank holiday weekend and it has not disappointed, I can tell you that much. So, let's get going. So the first thing that I actually made from the Downton Abbey cookbook was the traditional Victoria sandwich. Now, I think these days most, most of us call it a Victoria sponge cake. But actually, I think Victoria Sandwich is possibly like the original, original name. And I learned so much actually from cooking some of these recipes today. Got to scratch the surface a little bit on kind of some food history. So with the Victoria Sandwich, I actually hadn't realized that it's not as we traditionally think of Victoria sponge, a Victoria sponge cake today. So I always think of it as kind of the round cake with the jam and the cream. And actually, no, originally the filling, filling was just jam. And actually, I think I read somewhere else, not in the cookbook, that it was originally raspberry jam, which oddly enough, I used raspberry jam today, but that was not intentional. And additionally, it was not in the form that we usually see it in the kind of circle. It's actually cut into kind of finger sandwiches so I guess possibly also kind of where the name came from. And I think today you tend to see them dusted with some icing sugar, but actually traditionally it would have been cast in caster sugar. So yeah, so I felt like I really like discovered a few little bits and pieces there. In fact, I actually bought cream to put in it because I'd seen something about cream in the introduction and I couldn't understand why the ingredients list didn't have it on there. And then obviously when I went, went to make it and looked at it properly, I realized that actually it is only meant to be the jam. Now I feel like James would love the cream version as well. So I kind of split the cake in half and did half the very, very traditional way. And I did the other half with the cream. Next up, after I made the Victoria sponge, I then made Madeleines. Now I was a bit touch and go as to whether I was gonna make these. Essentially, I was a bit worried because it's a sponge cake again, and I was worried it was kind of gonna be a bit of a much of a muchness. But in terms of the different kind of smaller cake options in the Downton Abbey cookbook, there was lots that were like scones and tarts and all of that jazz. And whilst all really, really lovely, it was a lot more kind of complex and a little bit more effort to be had. So had pastry to be made, or I think the scones had like, you had to rest them for like two to four hours or something, or there was definitely something that you had to do that with. And I kind of did want to at least have a little bit of fun with this and kind of keep it a little bit relaxed. So I didn't fancy making any of those, which is why I opted for the Madeleines. Weird, weirdly enough, I do have a vintage, a French vintage Madeleine tray. I have no idea if I should have really used that to cook with. I actually bought it for home decor purposes, but I thought, hey, let's get it out, let's give it a clean and let's use this, and I did. 
but actually I thought it was kind of perfect to include Madeleine's because, and I'm not giving any spoilers away here because this is in the trailer, there is a significant French theme within uh, the latest Downton Abbey movie. So I thought actually it probably is really, really perfect that I make Madeleine's because it's a nod to the latest release. They were delicious as well, but I don't think my tin did them very much justice. I'm just intercepting here because I just watched back the footage of, um, I just watched back the intro footage to each of the recipes and I forgot some of the important facts <laughs> on it. So with the Madeleines, they actually featured in my Mrs. Beaton's cookbook as well. So they definitely were a thing of that era because I kind of, because I was kind of thinking, would, would there be like French, cakes and what have you but actually in the cookbook as well it says that families like the Crawleys obviously quite high-end families would have had many visits to places like France and so therefore that's why they would have had certain delicacies like that and I think also it was saying that cooks like Mrs Patmore in high-end homes like Downton Abbey also would have been cooking from I'm guessing translated versions of French cookbooks as well. So very much a thing of the time, even though it was kind of a delicacy from a different country, which I think you think, which I think I kind of expected less of in that particular era. Lastly, I made up our sandwiches. Now I picked two very quite simple fillings. There were a couple of different options available and some of them were really quite complex flavors and lots of different ingredients, but I knew that with some of them, James wasn't really gonna be a fan, so I kept it simple. But regardless of keeping it simple, they were actually really, really different. So I opted for a cheese sandwich and a cucumber sandwich. Both sound really kind of a bit plain and boring, but they really weren't. So the cheese sandwich, you actually mixed up the cheese with butter and white wine vinegar and Dijon mustard and cayenne pepper and yeah it was just a really interesting mix way different from kind of your regular kind of boring cheese sandwich and with the cucumber sandwich you actually soaked or marinated whatever you want to look at it like the cucumbers in white wine vinegar as well and i did that for about an hour beforehand and so yeah a really different taste and the butter with the cucumber sandwiches had lemon zest in so yeah really really bizarre but very, very different, and they definitely kind of took like very plain sandwich fillings to like the next level. And of course, I had to do all of this baking and making in true Mrs. Patmore style by wearing my Victorian slash Edwardian style kitchen apron. I actually picked it up from H&M Home last year, so if I can find the same one or one similar, I will link it below, but I absolutely adored it and just had to get it because it felt very traditional. And we do know that there was a scullery maid that worked and lived here. And so I just thought it was absolutely perfect. And yeah, I just had to have it for our kitchen. And I am done. I had to stop filming a little bit towards the end when I made up the sandwiches, just because I ran out of battery, sadly. Typical, I've just got the one I need to probably buy a second so that that kind of thing doesn't happen but um i have laid the table um i've tried to keep it as pretty and as kind of edwardian-esque or as and downton and downton abbey-esque as possible but ultimately i have not gone out and bought anything in particular so for example my teapot is my snazzy three pound <laughs> rabbit teapot from a charity shop which is seasonally perfect but would probably be frowned upon by um, the Dowager Countess. Um, so yeah, I'll spin you around and show you what my finished table looks like before James comes down and massacres it. So here we are. Seems they ate very beige afternoon teas in the Edwardian era and at Downton Abbey. Um, we have here the cheese sandwiches. I actually tasted the mixture and it's really yummy and um, you can really taste the Dijon mustard and then it has got a little bit of a kick to it with the um, white wine vinegar but interestingly I read whilst I was making it that the reason that they would mix butter with the cheese to put it in rather than put the cheese rather than put the butter on the bread and then the cheese is because it would stop there from it would stop any kind of mishaps whilst eating and kind of dropping or spilling anything 
onto your outfit. So I thought that was really interesting and actually very, very clever. Um, and then we have here, I cut these a bit too small and a bit too thinly and <laughs> it's a bit of a sad <laughs> presentation, but these are the cucumber um, sandwiches. The cucumbers I tasted and were quite sharp. I don't know how James is gonna feel about that, but we'll see. This is traditional Victorian sandwich, so with just the jam, and interestingly with caster sugar put on the top rather than ice and sugar. Uh, my madeleines don't look too bad, but they didn't come out great. Like, you can't really see the ridges, but I think that's probably more, that's a me problem. <laughs> I think that's more of the pan problem than uh, the recipe per se. I also don't have a sieve, so I had to kind of sprinkle the ice and sugar on, so it's not as delicate as I would like. And then this is the Victorian sandwich as well, but I added cream in as well because I know James would just be sad if that didn't happen. I think that is definitely better as like a whole cake rather than cutting these up like this. Lots of oozing, um, lots of extra cream for me to eat off of the um, off of the breadboard that we were <laughs> that I was cutting them on, but nonetheless, lots of oozing. Uh, and then, as I said, my kind of tea tea wear is not fully Downton Abbey appropriate. This was three pounds from a charity shop. Yeah, I know. Uh, it would be just so uncouth to have that at Downton Abbey, I'm sure. Uh, my my stag uh, my stag jug for milk. This is actually a little like 1980s coffee or tea set. I'm not convinced James is going to drink his tea from there, but we'll we'll see what happens. I just thought it would look very delicate and light. I picked up some bluebells and some buttercups from the garden in my little, one of my little posy vases, and then this I bought from Aurora Home recently, and yeah, I love this. It's so beautiful and very very elegant. So I felt it fit the the table perfectly. My plates are my Yvonne Ellen plates. Um, they all say something different like crumpet and the one underneath this is treacle. These are my vintage forks that James's mum bought from me, bought for me. And then these napkins are actually napkins that I took from my grandmother's house when we were clearing it out. And I thought they looked perfect, plus they're very spring-like. Oh, I've just now messed this all up. So yeah, that is the finished the finished table. I can't decide whether we're going to sit here or whether we will take take our tea into the living room. Obviously, as I said, in Downton Abbey, they have it when when indoors, they have it in the library and it's all one big room and actually we don't have one big room <laughs> to do that in. So, and I just didn't have the right table or even just any table to put in the living room to kind of set this all up in so yeah we'll just see what happens maybe we'll sit in here and eat it but i'm very excited to tuck in but i must take off my um my mrs patmore slash daisy apron before i get started i've just called james last minute mad dash to add my little spoons as well and um yeah i don't know shall i film his expression he'll probably be like what the hell is this is it i hope you enjoyed seeing what i made as part of my traditional edwardian and downton abbey themed afternoon tea if you would like to see some more videos like this in terms of delving into a little bit of food history and home history then let me know i am so into that kind of thing particularly at the moment i've done so much house history i think i keep on promising it that i'm going to do a bit of a 
storytelling video which will kind of share the stories of some of the people that lived in our home and kind of all of the history of our home so yeah i really must actually film that because i've i've had that in the locker for some time and i just haven't done anything about it but yeah i hope you enjoyed today's video i'm sorry if i've made you hungry i am definitely not hungry anymore i'm so so full i can't imagine how the Crawleys have their afternoon tea and then get ready for dinner later on. I'm assuming they probably didn't eat as much as I did this afternoon. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I will see you in the next one.